Hey everyone and welcome back. My name is Keith Gebhardt with LearnTechTraining.com and in this lecture we're going to talk about those network statements, okay? I get a lot of questions relating to this topic and it's for a good reason. They can be a little bit confusing at first, so I want to kind of clear things up. Now this lecture will be excellent for any of you trying to learn how to work with the network statement regarding RIP version 2, OSPF, or EIGRP routing protocols. This will be more focused relating to OSPF and EIGRP, however, because we're going to be introducing a topic called wildcard masks, okay? And with RIP version 2, utilizing the network command, we cannot use wildcard masks. So I would go ahead and write down this topology or create it as you will, whether you're in GNS3, uh, Dynamits, uh, Packet Tracer, Viral, whatever you can. Pay attention, follow along, take notes so you understand this thoroughly. So first thing to understand is what a loopback interface is. Well, it's basically a virtual or essentially a logical interface that does not physically exist on our router. So we can see we have one router here with no physical connections coming off of it. That is because we're using these loopback interfaces. They are programmed within the router and you could implement these on any routing device. Now, typically we only use these for testing purposes or lab type environments. Obviously there are, there are a few other applications we may find these in but this is what we're gonna use them for during this lecture. So looking at what we have going on here, we have the 10.30.5.2 with a CIDR notation of 24 for our loopback one address. Obviously with a CIDR notation of 24, that's our class C by default, meaning that the first 24 bits in our address will be related to our network bits. Looking at loopback 2's address, 10.0.12, means that the first 12 bits will be for networks and the last 20 will be related to our host bits. Loopback 3, we have a CIDR notation of 30, meaning the first 30 bits out of our 32 bits will be related for our network bits, and the last two will be related to our host bits. And then brings us down to loopback interface 4. Okay, the address is 172.16.4.10, with a prefix of 16, which is a class B by default subnet mask, meaning the first 16 bits are related to network bits, and the last 16 are related to our host bits. So let's go ahead and configure this router so we could kind of understand how the network command is being utilized. So I'm going to go ahead and go into router one CLI right here, and you guys can follow along. We're going to go ahead and configure these loopback addresses together. So what I'm going to do is simply go into global configuration mode, and I'm going to simply say interface loopback one. Okay. Now I need to assign it its IP address, which will be 10.30.5.2 with a class C default subnet mask. Now, since loopback addresses are always in the up and up state, and then we can see here it just came up, I do not need to tell it not to be turned off. It is already on. So I could go ahead and say interface loopback2 and IP address that to 10.0.0.5. And here we have a CIDR notation of 12. So this is subnetted. This subnet value will be 255.2400.0.0. And again, now we can just go right into loopback three, interface loopback three. And all we got to do is IP address this guy as well. So IP address will be 30.215.5.65 with a subnetted mask of 255.255.255.252. Okay. And finally, for our loopback four, we are going to go ahead and address him to 172.16.4.10 with a class B subnet mask, which is 255.255.0.0. And I forgot my address statement, so let's go ahead and just put him in there really quickly. And now we should be good. So now if I go ahead and do show run, okay, I'm going to say run pipe section interface we will see all four of our loopback interfaces configured. So if you need to pause the video and make sure you have yours looking like mine, go ahead and do so. Now, we need to actually configure EIGRP to be running on this, this uh, router because if I do show IP protocols, right, uh, protocols, it's not going to show me anything. There is no routing protocol on this device just yet. So let's go ahead inside. So let's go ahead and configure router EIGRP, and I'm just going to use the autonomous system number of one. Now, I'm going to say no auto summary because it's what I like to do typically in every situation, okay, unless there's a specific uh, scenario that requires it, okay? Typically, you will always run no auto summary. And now we need to tell it the network command. What the network command is going to utilize is classful addressing by default. So if I go ahead and say 10.30.5.2, okay, this by default without adding what we call a wildcard mask or wildcard bits, whatever you want to relate it to, will default these values to all zeros. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. If I go ahead and hit enter and then do show run, okay, section EIGRP, let's go ahead and see what that did. 
it indeed defaulted it to a class A address. Why is that? Because remember, a class A subnet mask by default is 255.0.0.0 or also known as a CIDR notation of 8. So it's only taking the value of the first number determining the class it resides in. Remember, to figure out what class an IP address is in, we determine that by that first octet value. We can indeed see it's in 10, so obviously it's gonna default it to 10. Let's go ahead and remove that network statement. So no network, in fact, I'm just gonna hit the up arrow here a few times, control A and hey no. Now let's go ahead and say network, okay, network 10, uh, network, if I spell it right, network, there we go, network 10.30.5.2, and I use a wildcard mask of all zeros. Well, this is Cisco's best practice, to be honest, because it's now including every value within this subnet mask. So it's it's saying, hey, anyone that belongs to the 10.30.5.2 network, I'm going to put you into EIGRP. And what that means is, is with EIGRP, even though we have address interfaces on our router, we might only want to control certain interfaces to be included in with EIGRP. So to figure that out, we simply say, do show IP EIGRP interface. Here, indeed, we could see that that loopback one address was included into EIGRP. Okay, but none of the other addresses are. Well, what if we want to include all addresses that start with the value of 10? Or maybe we want to go further. What if we want to include all addresses that start with 1030? But we don't have any 10.30s implemented on this router. So we could simply say now network 10.0.0.0. Since we know that this, you know, if we put any other values here, it's going to default to 10 if we do not include a wildcard mask. Or we could also say 10.0.0 and then maybe include, okay, what if we want to use 0 0.255, 255, 255? That's a wildcard mask saying just recognize the first octet. But yet again, since we know it's going to look for anything that starts with 10, we no longer have any other addresses that be, begin with 10. It'll include both of these 10 dot whatever loopback interfaces. Let's go ahead and prove that. Whoops, I messed up. There we go. So I'm just going to say 10.0.0.0 here to prove it. So now if I go ahead and do show IP EIGRP interface, it now includes both of those interfaces. Pretty cool, huh? So one thing we already noticed is if we use all zeros, okay, remember it's an exact match. We were able to prove that because it put the loopback interface into EIGRP. So EIGRP will recognize this as a network to use EIGRP essentially. Then we did a 10.00, we noticed that defaulted. So it's asking anyone that is assigned with the first octet of 10, please come in. So now EIGRP is recognizing these two interfaces, okay? So we see that. But what if we want to include all interfaces on a router? Well, instead of using all zeros, okay, let's just change that around a little bit. So we could say network 0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0, and you're sitting here saying, well, wait a minute, there's no addresses here. Well, this goes back to when you're learning routing and static and default routes, when we try to set up a gateway of last resort, we use all zeros saying, if it doesn't know where it's going, just to forward it to the next location, give that responsibility out. So a similar concept that you could kind of relate it to is if I use all zeros here, it's kind of saying anything. You know, I don't want to just not include nothing. I want to include everything. But we need to give it a wildcard mask to make this work. So we would simply say 255, 255, 255, 255, hit enter. And now if I do that show IP EIGRP interface command, Look at this, included every address that's associated to our network. Very, very cool stuff, guys, okay? And you just have to remember that the biggest topic or you know concept to really understand with this is we can control what interfaces essentially are running any routing protocol at any given time by these network statements. Now, there are other means that we could do. I mean, there's something called, well, if, let me go back into my command line interface here. If we implemented something called a passive Okay, let me just say passive interface, you could really get down and dirty and really control which interfaces are utilized on this router if you wanted to implement every interface running EIGRP. We typically, all right, so there are situations that that's, that's feasible, but then there's also other situations where maybe we only have one link going to that router that needs to be using EIGRP, so we don't want all interfaces running it. And if I even use a passive interface and open up another interface to run another IP routing protocol, right? It's going to accept it being an EIGRP because that's what EIGRP sees as a network. The other thing to really take out of how this is working is to understand that even if these interfaces are addressed and on the router, 
It does not mean that EIGRP knows about them, okay? The only time EIGRP knows about an addressed interface is if we tell it to. And again, right here, we're saying only know the address to this because we're using an exact match what? Wildcard mask. So until we tell EIGRP to recognize this as a network, and again, by default, it's a class full, unless we want to go in and tweak these wildcard bits a little bit more, then it will not include it into EIGRP. Very, very easy, very, very cool. But now you're kind of seeing how we are able to control what network command goes in, what network command goes out. Also remember, okay, even though these interfaces are now within EIGRP, this is the network address. It's recognizing it as a network. And, you know, say we have a 10.0.0.0 default to a class A address, you know, side notation 8 for 255.0.0.0. Well, this is just the network saying, hey, anybody that is in 10, it's kind of like taking a uh, roll call, you know, maybe you're a teacher or a student and your teacher's always saying, Ben, are you here? His hand goes up. Eli, are you here? His hand goes up. Susan, are you here? Her hand goes up, right? So if they all have 10 or their names fall in there, well, then I will include whoever else is here by default. That's why we were able to just enter 10 and it included this address. Very simple concept to understand, but now you're actually able to physically see it take place. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you guys later.